So let's take a third uh, attempt at this code. Uh, but before I show you the AI generated code, let me tell you a little bit about the range function. We have so far seen this version of the range function where we pass in one argument. And when we say range of n, we know that the values in that range are 0, 1 and so on all the way up to but not including n. So we stop before n. Now there are two other ways in which you can call the range function. If you call it with two arguments m and n, then it will give you the values m, m plus 1, m plus 2 all the way up to but not including n. And then the third way is if you call it with three arguments m, n and k, then it will give you the values m, m plus k, m plus 2k. So in steps of k again all the way up to but not including n. So we will see this second uh, way of using the range function in this code along with the first way. So once again I'm trying to write this num unique function and here again I have used a technical prompt. I'm telling the AI to initialize a variable count equal to zero. So perhaps I'm going to use this to accumulate an answer and then I'm in a comment saying use two nested loops. I am suggesting to my generative AI a particular strategy for writing this code because I think this code is best written with two nested loops. And I can see that my AI has produced some rather complex code. Now we have learnt patterns to recognize and decompose complex code into more understandable parts. Let us use that skill as we try and understand this AI generated code. So firstly you can very easily recognize the accumulator pattern for the outer for loop. We are initializing a count equal to zero. This is the variable that will accumulate our answer and then if some condition is true we will increase that count by one. Now how exactly do we get to this? statement well that is in the else statement associated with the inner for loop. So let us try and see if we can understand what the inner for loop is doing. The outer for loop is simply examining all values i in the range 0 up to but not including len of data. That is to say i is all legal indices in this list data. Now given such an index i, we are now in the nested for loop. We are examining all j's in the range i plus 1 up to but not including len of data. That is we are examining all indices j that start after i. So given an i, we are looking at all the indices j starting at i plus 1. And then what are we doing? We are checking if data i and data j are equal. If they are equal, we are breaking out of the loop. And we know that if we break out of the loop, we will not come to the else case. Remember, the else case of a for loop corresponds to the no break situation. So what this code is saying is if you encounter the value data i, at a location j that is after i, meaning you found this value data i at a later location in the array, then don't increase the count. So this will only increase the count if you are unable to find this value at any later location in this list. That means index i is the last occurrence of this value in this list. So this code will count this value only once at its last occurrence. So when we try and understand the inner for loop, we find that it's basically searching for the value data i in this slice starting at index i plus 1 all the way to the end. If we are able to find it 
then we don't increase the count. It's only if this uh, search was unsuccessful that we will come to the else case, the no break case, and then increase the count. This code is complex, so let us jump to Python Tutor and follow this code and trace it.